Hi, this is McCoy Buck. And in this video, what we're gonna talk about is the animation channels and really help you understand uh, this timeline because these are really vital to understanding what's going on with your animation through these animation channels. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna go back to ball one. All right, so we know that we're using the tool called the transform layer tool or M on the keyboard. And when I move this ball up and down, this is called the translation. And the reason why I know this is called the translation is because if I come over here, this little symbol right here on this line, this is called a channel or a, a animation channel. And the animation channel is recording the layer translation or the X, Y, and if you want Z, but this is recording the X, Y axis of my animation. Now what we're gonna do is with this animation, we're gonna create a squash effect so right here on frame one where we're at, what I want you to do now is go to your ball and at the top of this binding box, if you go to any one of these corners, it's gonna give you a little double arrow. What I want you to do is go ahead and click on the top double arrow, holding down shift, push down. So drag down, holding down shift. And what you're gonna get is this ball that's gonna be squishing down. Now what I want you to do next is I want you to go to frame 24 and I want you to take and copy that same keyframe for the squash to frame 24. So control C, control V is gonna copy that keyframe. All right, so now let's take a look at what's happening. So with that ball now squashed, as I go through, you're gonna see that this ball is staying squashed the entire time. And it's gonna stay that way until I tell it to change. Again, remember the keyframe, it's gonna represent a point in time in which you as the animator made a modification. So until we tell the, the software to make another modification, it's gonna hold that modification for, for all time, essentially. So let's go back over here and let's look at the new channel layer that this created. So now the new channel layer that this created is called a layer scale channel. And scaling is basically what we did. It's the squishing and the squashing of this ball. So now with that layer scale, what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of make this a little look a little bit better. So go to frame one and go ahead and bring that ball just a little bit up from that squish it was currently at. So we're going, we're going from here to here. Now the next thing that we wanna do is give it kind of a stretching effect as it's going back up. So now the same thing, making sure you're holding down shift, go ahead and grab the top and pull that up kind of like so. All right, now that you have done that, go to frame 12 and it already kind of went to its, its, its normal state. And this is exactly what we want it to do. We want it to go back to its normal scale. So here at the top, what we're gonna do is we can either click on the scale to reset, or we know that on frame zero, where the design was originally created, this has the default scale. Uh, so either way, you can either copy that first uh, keyframe on frame zero, or you can come here to your scale and hit reset. And as you can see, it created another keyframe. Now, as the ball is falling back down, it wants to go back to that squished state because remember, we put a keyframe for that squash on the, on the first keyframe and on the 24th keyframe. So now what I wanna do is I want to make this a stretch. So I know on frame six, I had that stretch. Let's go ahead and use that same stretch. So I'm gonna hit Control C, Control V to copy that stretch. Now from 18 to 24, it wants to squash back down and it's squashing back down way too soon. So what we need to do is we need to give it another keyframe uh, before it even squashes so that it maintains its shape, uh, its normal shape before it, it squashes down. We know on the second keyframe, we created this shape. Let's create that same shape before it squashes down completely. So what I'm simply gonna do is grab the keyframe from two and I'm gonna copy it onto 23. And now what it's gonna do, because this is gonna repeat in a cycle, once it reaches the end of 24, it's gonna go back to one. It's going to hold this keyframe uh, 24 and one, which is the exact same shape uh, for two frames. So now go ahead and hit play. Now for this animation, it's very basic as you can see, the animation is very floaty. So the timing is set correctly. What we would need to do to make this look a lot better is to fix the spacing. However, I don't talk about that until we get into the more intermediate and advanced section. So for right now, this is the exact same result that I want you to have. 
So let's say as you're playing this back, you're looking at it and you don't like the way it looks. Well, remember to use your channel and your keyframes. Say it's the, the translation, maybe it's going up too high and maybe you want it to go down a little bit lower. Well, we could fix that. All we need to do is go back to the exact keyframe where that position is being recorded and simply move it down. And now we can go ahead and hit play. And you can see it's a lot closer to the ground. I can move it even closer. The closer you have an animation closer to one another, the slower it's going to be. And the further you have your animation away from one another, the faster it's going to be. So let's go ahead and just do an example of that. So I'm going to put it right here. So you can see it's slow. It's almost kind of like a, a, a bubble. But if we have it fast, let's go ahead and let's move it way up here. You can see it's traveling in a lot. Uh, traveling a lot faster to make it from frame uh, frame 1 to frame 24 all the way up in the air and back down in that one second, that 24 frame second. All right, so now I think you understand the basics of what's going on there. Let's go ahead and move over to ball 2 real quick and let's do the exact same thing. Now in the next video, we're going to be using ball 2 and we're going to be using bones and I want you to pay close attention because the channeling is going to be a little bit more different because we're using bones. Uh, but also we're using two sets of bones and I'll show you how to exactly know what's going on with your bones and your keyframes and we'll talk more about that in the next video.